Hi, and welcome back to the New Frontier Playbook. I'm Scott Phillips, I'm your host. Today we're going to talk about net present value, a way to calculate the current value of a future economy in space. A pretty provocative idea and pretty interesting. Before we do that, let's go ahead and set some context and talk about where we're at and where we've been going. So remember, the New Frontier Playbook is a WordPress site. It's out there at newfrontierplaybook.com. All the content is there and you can check it out for free. What we're doing right now is walking through a series of videos on the econ economic track, uh, building up a an economic rationale as part of the political economic case for space, for a big future in space. We started with an episode talking about the astronaut economy versus the market economy and what those two things are. We then looked at price check. What does a cup of coffee cost in a future market economy in space? And it was pretty expensive. Uh, we then talked about the idea of a conjugate, an economic conjugate, which is basically a market economy in space is going to be very, very expensive and running at a very high cost point, very different from Earth, and we called it an economic conjugate, uh, taking uh, uh, inspiration from verb tenses, singular versus plural. We then talked about conjugates on Earth. They exist. There are economies on our Earth that have very big disparate gaps uh, between cost in one economy versus costs in another. We then looked at, very provocatively, what a minimum wage in space might look like. We looked at the idea that minimum wage, a minimum wage in space could be 10 times what it is in the most expensive economy here on Earth. It could be $250 an hour, but it could also be even higher at $2,500 an hour. And that gave us an interesting way to look at what the benefits to an individual might be and how it might relate to the prices in an economy in, in space. Wages have to track against prices. We then went on to look at return on investment. What would be the return on investment, the, the benefit coming back from an economy in space to those of us here on Earth? And then we are now at the point we're going to use net present value to take a look at how do we ca connect or calculate that uh, that benefit uh, in today's dollars from that future economy in space? And is it a good idea to make a big investment? First, let's just go ahead and recap what we think about when we, when we talk about an economic conjugate. So the idea of an economic conjugate is that the cost of living in space is going to be exponentially higher than it is on Earth. It's just unavoidable. Water and air, these things are going to be 10 to 100 times more expensive. Therefore, if you have a market economy in space, you have to charge prices based on the costs of everything and what it costs to create it. You also have to have wages that reflect the price of living, the cost of living. And so those wages are going to be very, very high. Uh, again, 250, 2,500 an hour, we don't really know yet, but very high comparatively speaking. And the benefit is the return on investment that comes back in taxes on income, taxes on corporate fees, and the economic growth that occurs in that future space economy. So that economic conjugate is a pretty powerful thing. Now today what we're going to do is talk about net present value. And it's a, it's a way in the business world of calculating whether you want to make an investment. You, take, you put the uh, dollars of the investment that you're going to make and you measure out the cash flows that are going to come back from your investment over multiple years and you use a discount rate, an interest rate, because there's a time value to money. So each of those you know, cash flows as they're farther and farther out are worth a little bit less today because they're not dollars today, they're dollars out in the future. But you can actually calculate and add those all up and then subtract the initial investment and you get a value. You know, Is it positive or, or is it negative? And that tells you to some extent whether uh, it is worth making an investment or not in a project. You can do that on small projects and you can do that on very big projects. Now the interesting thing about net present value as we apply it to this particular situation, the case for a, something as big as a market economy in space, uh, there are some pros. Uh, first, you are building a business case for space. That's pretty important. Uh, you also get to set these terms are in financial terms that are fairly well established. It's a case that the public can actually see the value and understand what you're saying. So that's important. 
and it's a chance to put long-term benefits to solve long-term problems and create a growth story, a narrative for growth. Now, against those pros, there are some cons. You've got very long, long time frames. There is volatility in interest rates and in economies, and there will be in cash flows. Those cash flows are very uncertain. You don't quite know what they're going to be. Now, it's also a lot more subjective than it looks. There's a little bit more art than science sometimes, especially when you're dealing with very long-term time frames. And so what all that means is the outcome may not even be positive. You don't really know. You know, you have to go out and calculate it to figure that out. And you're not actually capturing, you're only capturing direct cash flows back. You're not ca ca uh, capturing any of the indirect benefits of a future economy in space, either in space or, or back on Earth in terms of jobs or growth or others. Just the direct cash flows coming back in terms of taxes and, you know, on income and corporate fees and stuff. Now, there are some other considerations when thinking about net present value and applying it to a future case, a future economy in space at a macroeconomic level. Uh, the return cash flows are going to be quite large compared to the size of the population living in that future space economy. That's pretty interesting. It also starts very small and grows rapidly with scale. The more people you put in, the more dollars you get back, and eventually, you are probably always investing and putting and funding some of those operations in space, but eventually you'll get more back than you put in on a year-to-year -year basis. And that point, uh, when the, uh, the dollars coming back exceed the dollars going in, is sort of an ignition point for a self-sustaining economy. And we don't quite know what that point is or when it would occur, but it's pretty interesting to speculate and, and think about how that is. Uh, Long-term thinking in this context can actually cha change, help us change short-term calculations. And the numbers could be really, really big well out into the future. The problem with all this so far is that no really credible model exists today. And you need a model of economic activity and cash flows coming back under various types of fees and assumptions in order to be able to calculate the net present value and make the case that it's a positive in today's dollars right now to go do this. Um, again, no such model exists. We need those to estimate the future benefits and, and discount them to the, the today's cash flows. And so advocates really need to think about this and, and push to get a model created. There is, it is possible to build a model. It may have some challenges, but it needs to be a sustained effort to start to build it up. You know, you can hire high-priced consultants like the McKinsey folks. They could do it for several millions. <coughs> uh, academics can do it, <coughs> excuse me, uh, probably a lot cheaper. Uh, think tanks can do it. Uh, but essentially what you need are people like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk to start thinking about articulating and pushing a public economic case for a future in space rather than just private ambitions and private visions, no matter how worthy those are. We probably need an X prize to go out and create a model. That's it. Uh, that's kind of the, the, the topic here for today. And our next topic is thinking about net present value and how to build that and what it might say about the returns on investments from a future economy in space. We're now going to go to a little provoca, little, get a little more provocative and talk about what would NASA's budget potentially be if a future economy in space were net present value positive today. Is there any limit on that budget if we could build something that would return massive amounts of cash flows to uh, our domestic economy? Uh, we'll kind of go speculate on that and scope that out a little bit. Uh, as for now, what we'll do, go ahead and do is end as we usually do with a request for your support. Uh, please just sub subscribe to the channel. We're exploring these topics. We have a lot more to explore. We'll finish the econ track, then we'll go off and look in some other uh, look at some other areas which are equally interesting. Uh, the content is all out there for free at newfrontierplaybook.com. So read ahead, check it out, and you know add your name to the distribution, the email list if you like to get an update. Uh, we don't really have a newsletter yet, but you know we might develop one. <laughs> and you're welcome to buy the author a beer. Uh, and uh, that would be appreciated uh, if you're kind uh, on that one. Uh, we also are looking at, uh, if anyone knows Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, we always end with a provocative or at least attempt to be funny. Uh, tell them 
uh, we could always use their support and, and wouldn't that be helpful. The last one here is really, we probably need an X uh, prize for an economic model about a, of a future economy in space. So if anyone knows people who do X prizes and want to fund that, uh, that can be separate from what we're doing here, but we definitely need that uh, in order to make this uh, a big, bolder future in space. All right, that's it for today. Uh, come back and we'll talk about a future budget for NASA in the context of a market economy in space and what that could be. Signing off for now, Scott Phillips from the New Frontier Playbook. Thank you very much. Always fun.